Time for some NBA quick takes. Max Kellerman, who will win the Defensive Player of the Year? Well, Gobert will win it, but Ben Simmons deserves it. Ben Simmons said the right thing about this. He said, look, they say Gobert is the best defensive player, but he can't guard one through five. You can create mismatch there. Ben Simmons can legit guard one through five at an elite level. That's the defensive player of the year. Mm, Bam says it's Bam. Canty, who will win coach of the year? Molly, it's going to be Monty Williams, head coach of the Phoenix Suns. And I know Max thinks it should be Tom Thibodeau from the New York Knicks. And a big part of that is because the Knicks are going to be in the playoffs for the first time since 2012, 2013. Well, guess what? The Suns ain't been in the playoffs since 2010. And Monty Williams got that group to go from 10th in the Western Conference last year to second in the Western Conference this year. When they started the month of May, this team had the best record against teams above 500 in the NBA. One of only two teams to have a top 10 rating, offensive efficiency, defensive efficiency. It's Monty Williams. Definitely a two-horse race. Uh, Max, who's going to win MVP? Jokic, and he deserves it. Game for game, the best player has been James Harden or Joel Embiid. Okay. But they have missed too many games. Jokic. Now, forget about the 27 almost points, 11 boards, 8 assists, the best passing big of the whole thing. His PER is leading the league. And it's an imperfect stat, but you know who has the highest PER lifetime all time? Michael Jordan. You know who's mm. number two? LeBron James. Mm. It ain't the way. It correlates pretty well with how good you are. <laughs> Fellas, we stay in the NBA. Let's get you caught up on last night. How about the Heat? Jimmy Butler said you almost have forgot. We're the defending Eastern Conference champs. A 12-point win over the Sixers who have the best record in the East. Jimmy. I want to win. Keep winning at that. So, yeah, you can call it whatever you want to call it. I'm not going to say, like, we're trying to prove it to anybody. We just know what we're capable of, honestly. We talk about it all year. I think we're finally coming around. Let's just see if we can keep playing basketball the way that we're playing. Um, not really jinx ourselves and just go out there and hoop. All right, Big Perk back with us. Perk, you got me? Hey, hey, there he is. All right, I just got to say this quickly before I get to you guys. Everyone slept on the Heat last year. They were also the fifth seed, and they made it all the way to the finals. Perk, I will start with you. Can the Heat actually challenge the Nets in the East? Hold on, Molly. Hold on, Molly. Look, everyone everyone didn't sleep on the Heat last year, okay? There was one person that was... There was one person sitting up here talking about the Heat, and I'm about to talk about them right now. Okay, them goons, do you? Them goons from Dade County, they're putting their ski masks on at the right time. It's summertime. It's hot out. You know the goons are lurking. And look, when you watch this Miami Heat team, they play inspiring winning basketball on both ends of the floor. Offensively, you are having, you're running your offense through Bam where he's dribble handoff and guys are cutting back door. Jimmy Buckets going on the block, taking guys off the dribble, one, two dribble pull ups, making plays for others. They have shooting and Duncan Robinson and Tyler Hero, Trevor Ariza, Wisely Ben on both ends of the floor and defensively, they locked in. They are, they are on your heels like a pair of socks defensively. Bam, one of the best defender bigs in the league, right after Anthony Davis. A guy that can switch one through five, a guy that can anchor the defense, great side of, uh, great weak side shot blocker, helping the helper, things to that nature. But most importantly, they have one of the best coaches in the game today, a top five coach ever in the history of the NBA. Eric Spokes, he throws things out there at you that just confuses you. I'm watching the game last night. I didn't know if he was in a 2-1-2, a 3-2, whatever it was that had the 76ers and Joel and B discombobulated. So not only should the Nets be worried about the Heat, but the whole I'm, I'm about the Heat, but the whole Eastern Conference should be worried about them goons from Dade County. Well, it's a it's a righteous position to take to support the Heat there. And do I think the Heat could take them to six games, the Nets? Yeah, six. They, they're not going to take them to seven. Let me tell you what it's like, and I have experience as a, as a reformed Knicks fan. Back in the day, you could say the Knicks or the Pacers, you know, they could challenge the Bulls. No, they couldn't. They could win a couple games from the Bulls. Maybe in a great year, they could take them seven. They never had a chance to win. Not really. Not really. Because the Bulls had Jordan and Pippen and, you know, Horace Grant and then Robin. And, a, and that's these Nets now. You might say, oh, that one year the Pacers did beat him. Remember, Jordan only played those 17 games, came back at the end, didn't have his legs, right? Maybe that's like James Harden. The problem is I saw Harden 
show up. How, Perk? How did he show up? You said I say it a lot. How did he show up? Fat and out of shape, looking like a hot mess. A walking triple-double with 30 points in wins. James Harden, Kevin Durant, and Kyrie Irving will not be taken to a Game 7 throughout these playoffs, East or West. Big Perk, there's one thing I agree with you with. Them goons from Dade County is out of there because you saw Udonis Haslam, who hadn't played the game all season, <laughs> play last night, and you saw he was having none of that from the Sixers. Joel, Joel B tried to get a little chippy with Ariza, and then Dwight Howard. It didn't matter. Udonis Haslam wanted all the smoke. But I love the mentality of this Miami Heat's team, especially how they defend. But I don't think there's going to be a defense that's out there in the NBA, including theirs, that can contend with what the Brooklyn Nets are bringing to the table with a healthy James Harden, KD, and Kyrie. I just don't. I, I mean, you see the numbers when they got James Harden on the court. The Nets record is something like 28-7. and seven. So, I mean, it's a virtually unguardable team offensively. Now, they're going to have to figure some things out on defense, but their offense is so good, they're going to have the margin of error to be able to to go through this playoffs Chris. and figure it out in terms of being able to Chris, slow teams down quite enough. There are alien civilizations, like advanced civilizations, studying the Earth right now who haven't figured out how to stop that Nets Exa offense. Exactly. There's, not, there's, no, there's no earthly defense that's going to stop that mm. Nets offense. It's, mm. Forget it. No if shot. they're healthy, forget it. No shot. All I'm, I'm, I'm going to say is, is this. Y'all are really not showing the proper respect to Eric Spolcher, okay? I watched this man last year Last year in the bubble, in the playoffs. I watched him switch up his defense every series, threw guys off. Everyone thought that the Milwaukee Bucks were going to just walk through the Miami Heat. Eric Spoelstra and the Miami Heat had something different to say about it. Back I watched him. Jimmy Butler on the biggest stage against LeBron James and Anthony Davis go out there and lay it all out on the line. The man had a 40-point triple-double said we wasn't going home. Bam was just hurt at the time. What, what y'all failed to realize is this, man. When I look at intimidation is everything, okay? And the thing about the Miami Heat, they're going to get into your airspace. They're going to get into your face. They want all that smoke. And when you go back and look in this regular season, when Kyrie Irving, James Harden, Kevin Durant played, and they played the Miami Heat one game without Jimmy Butler, it went down to the wire, and Bam dropped the 40 piece on him. That's the problem. This is what y'all not understanding. We talk about how good, how great of a player Anthony Davis is, and how he's a game changer. Bam out of the Bayou is a game changer. He's a game changer. GM to find the lead. Listen, man. What I'm trying to tell y'all: playoffs is all about adjustments. And if you sitting up here, you talk about the personnel and the players on the court. Cool. I'm going to talk about the coaching. Who am I taking? Eric Spoelstra or Steve Nash? Give me each It's not Steve, it's not Steve Nash you got to worry about. It's Mike D'Antoni with James Harden. This Nets Mike team is like. Th 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 he hasn't won it because he hasn't yeah, had the he horses. He's got them now. Mike D'Antoni with James Harden is. A a a it's like the Rockets just traded back then, just traded for KD and Kyrie. Good we heard night. That yesterday. Now, now, I'll say this. I'll say this. Everything, everything you said about the Heat is true. Like, if by challenge you mean after the series, they're going to know they were in a series, yes, the Heat will leave a piece of themselves with the Nets. There'll be a couple of games maybe you go, well, if only this would have happened that way. If only that would have happened this way. They could No, but that's an illusion is what I'm saying. When you got as much talent as the right. Nets have, you always win. Hey, Big Perk, we really got to go. I need a yes or no question here so producers don't kill me. Who is the biggest threat to the Nets in the East? Is it the Heat? The Heat or my dark horse, Molly, okay, contender. That's I'm going to leave it at okay. that. The right. Heat or the dark horse so in that's the East a yes. All right, Perk, we'll be back with us. When we come back here on First Take, whose career will last longer, Brady as a...